Deep in the highlands of Scotland exists a dramatic landscape, one characterized by lush greenery, graceful hills, skyscraping mountains, and yawning valleys. In the eyes of many, the highlands are a fantastical place, a land populated with rugged, kilt-clad warriors and windswept moors. A mythic land brought to vivid life by the colorful stories of the people who live there. Their ancestors believed that Scotland was a gateway into the other world, a world thought to be inhabited by fairies and other magical entities, some friendly, but some feared. It's no wonder that such a place would be home to a legendary being, truly one of the most iconic beasts in the world of cryptids and mysterious creatures. Our story begins as far back as the 6th century AD, when Scotland was home to the Picts, an industrious people who lived in the region during the early Middle Ages. During this time, an Irish monk that would come to be known as St. Columba spent his days traveling the wild lands of the area, talking with townsfolk, and converting pagans to Christianity. One day, while traveling through a small village, Columba stumbles upon two local men working in a cemetery. As the men had just finished filling in a grave plot, they stop to rest. The monk approaches them, and the trio engages in friendly but somber conversation. As St. Columba learned, the two men had recently buried their close friend, a hard-working fisherman who met his fate on the very water that sustained him for many years. The men speculating recounted the story of their friend's tragic death. Early one morning, as the sun began to rise, the fisherman embarked on a day-long fishing trip as he had done so many times before. While the fisherman was about to venture back to shore in the early evening hours, after a long, fruitful day on the water, the fisherman would meet his untimely end. The fisherman would not return home that evening. In fact, it wasn't until a few days later that the fisherman's badly mangled body would wash up on shore. One of the men, shedding a tear, spoke of his friend's death as resulting from a horrific encounter with something huge, something beastly, something unrecognizable, something terrifying. People saw it, other fishermen, even people by the shore. Columba looked back at the water in shock and would abruptly abandon the area out of fear. But through his continued work and interaction with townspeople throughout the countryside, he would retell the tragic story of the doomed fisherman, warning others not to visit or go near Loch Ness. Rumors of the beast among locals would remain just that, rumors. And fortunately for them, the waters around the region would remain calm, at least for the time being. It was more than a thousand years later that the legend of the now ancient beast, a terrifying story shared across generations of locals in the area, would again resurface, this time in 1933. Aldi and John Mackey, a married couple who lived in the region, laughed while enjoying a beautiful spring day as they walked along a winding road overlooking Loch Ness. As locals who grew up in the region, the mystifying legend of the water beast was ingrained in the minds of almost everyone, young and old. But absent substantiated sightings, it remained only a fear-inducing local legend, a story used by parents and elders to scare kids and prevent them from playing near the lake. As Aldi and John Mackey walked into a clearing overlooking the lake, Aldi noticed something strange out of the corner of her eye. The couple hurries over to the side of the hill, where a clearing in the trees allowed for a better view of the water. Something was moving in the lake below. As the water churned violently, an enormous black mass under the water began to take shape. 
a prehistoric looking jagged object appeared to slowly rise from the water's surface. John Mackey recounted seeing what appeared to be two huge black eyes, barely visible above the water. The giant, horrifying creature would then quickly disappear under the water, leaving a swirl of waves and foam in its wake. Aldi and John Mackey rushed to inform local authorities, and not surprisingly, were soon asked to speak with an inquisitive local journalist of the name Alex Campbell. Upon interviewing the Mackeys, Campbell was captivated. Aldi's vivid account of the gigantic creature would inspire Campbell to publish the first public newspaper article entitled Strange Spectacle in Loch Ness, a piece that would ultimately immortalize the legend throughout the Scottish countryside. A few months later, George Spicer, a local proprietor of a lakeside tavern, contacts Alex Campbell. The resident recounts an alarming tale of his close encounter with the now infamous creature, a story that is beginning to invoke a sense of danger and fear among residents of the area. According to Spicer's description, the dragon-like beast had a long neck, a jagged, humped back, and measured over 30 feet in length. Wide-eyed, Campbell pauses at Spicer's descriptive account. Inspired by Spicer's encounter, Campbell would go on to publish a follow-up article, and it was in this article that for the first time, the creature would be adorned with its now globally recognized name, the Loch Ness Monster. Several more sightings and encounters with the mysterious creature would be reported throughout the end of the year. But it wasn't until early in 1934 that the first photographic evidence of the legendary creature would surface. Although blurry and a poor quality, the famous black and white photograph capturing the monster above the water's surface would propel the monster onto the front page of newspapers across the world. As time progressed, the Loch Ness Monster became a captivating and loved popular culture icon. Sightings of the creature, now affectionately referred to as Nessie, would continue regularly with the passing decades, amplified by the thousands of tourists who would visit the region annually in search of the famed beast. Although the veracity of these quite regular accounts varies, the Loch Ness Monster's description has remained consistent, likely due to the capture of the famous black and white photo in 1934. The creature is large, usually described as between 20 and 30 feet in length. It has a long neck, a jagged, humped back like that of a dragon. However, it lacks typical extremities. It has no limbs or feet. It is said to propel itself with large oar-like flippers. And despite its imposing, sluggish appearance, the creature is said to move with surprising speed, both in water and by some accounts, on land. Nessie's description has led some to theorize about the true nature of the beast's origin. With its long neck and oar-like appendages, some believe that Nessie belongs to an extinct genus known as the plesiosaurs. These ancient marine reptiles existed millions of years ago and swam in the prehistoric oceans alongside lands inhabited by dinosaurs. Their most defining features were their long necks, an incredible size. The shortest examples usually measured around 10 feet, while the longest, known as the Lasmosaurus, could reach lengths of over 40 feet. Some scientists and cryptozoologists note that Scottish geology might support this theory. During the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, most of Scotland was underwater. These bodies of water would have been breeding grounds for the plesiosaurs. Perhaps the Loch Ness Monster is a holdover from this bygone era, a creature or subspecies left behind as water levels receded. Similar creatures have also been reported in other lakes around the Northern Hemisphere. Both the United States and Iceland play host to their own Nessie-like creatures, specifically residing in Lake Champlain and Lagerfloat Lake, respectively. 
Some believe that it's possible that these large, serpentine creatures share the same origin as the famed Loch Ness Monster, and were trapped there by sudden tectonic activity. There may also be a mythological alternative. Scottish legend tells of a similar, mysterious creature known as the Kelpie, a water monster described as a giant, horse-like creature said to appear in rivers and lakes. When unsuspecting victims draw near the creature's lair, it will attack and ultimately drown them in the depths. With its long neck and aquatic origin, some theorize that Nessie and the Kelpie are one and the same. Some scientists, in their efforts to explain the origins of the Loch Ness Monster, tend to assume a more grounded, less fantastical perspective, as a creature of Nessie's size would quickly deplete the local food source in the lake. They speculate that Nessie may have been mistaken for various species of fish that are still large, though not unreasonably so. One common but less captivating theory is that Nessie is a large sturgeon, a freshwater fish that can reach lengths of over 10 feet. Another is that the creature could be a giant cold water eel, which would account for the widely described serpentine shape. Some even believe that Nessie might be a species of shark similar to the Greenland shark, though adaptive to fresh water. But whatever the case, the mystery around Nessie has fascinated the curious and inquisitive the world over, so much so that it has led many to actively seek her. The first expedition came in 1934, immediately following the sensation surrounding the famous black and white photograph. Sir Edward Mountain, a wealthy English baronet, led the five-week endeavor. As Sir Edward and his crew combed the lake for evidence, teams of men watched from a distance with binoculars and photographic equipment. Though many photographs are taken by the group, no definitive evidence is found. More recently, in 1987, a group of scientists embarked on yet another expedition titled Deep Scan. They trawl Loch Ness with sonar technology in hopes of discovering any trace of the monster. But this time, they do. The scientists react from sudden activity on their reader. A large, fast-moving object is detected in the lock. At first, the team suspects it to be a herd of seals, but the size and depth is far too unusual for such an explanation. Baffled, the scientists lead the expedition, uncertain as to what they had witnessed. Beyond more formal efforts, as is consistent with human nature, others go to great lengths to exploit the story. In the years and decades after the initial sightings, some people have staged fake sightings for notoriety. Fast forward to 1997. Disappointingly, analysts finally determined that the famous photograph first circulated in 1934 is fake. The size of the water ripples imply that the object in question is actually much smaller than it appears in the capture, said to be only a few feet long at most. It's then determined that the figure is simply a toy submarine with a putty neck to imitate Nessie's speculative shape. But even so, the legend of the Loch Ness Monster continues to fascinate the world. Today, Nessie reigns as one of the most recognizable icons in the world of cryptozoology. Even those who know nothing of the field have likely heard of this famous creature and the mysteries harbored by the famed Loch Ness. If you've ever visited the Scottish Highlands, you may agree that the land possesses an air of mysticism. It makes people want to believe a creature like the Loch Ness Monster could plausibly exist there. Its ancient origins and captivating legends work to harness the collective imagination of visitors from around the world, drawn there by the promise of serenity, awe-inspiring scenery, and a possible encounter with our amazingly mysterious friend we call Nessie. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. 
We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, monsters, or legendary creatures doesn't matter here. Just believe in the possibility. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.